y'all and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel and in today's video I'm gonna do a little kind of chit chat get ready with me slash get to know me because I realized like I've been well first of all I'm sorry I've been in my ear for so long but I realized I have been like uploading videos and whatnot but like I don't know if y'all actually know like me as a person so this is just my chance to be a little bit more personable and you know get to know me and talk with y'all and everything and in this video I'm gonna just talk about 22 things that I've learned like at the age of 22 my birthday was just a couple of days ago and I'm now 22 years old and I don't know I just I feel like ew I'm getting older and I know that's like a part of life and stuff but yeah it's just like wow soon bills are gonna hit me I gotta find my own health insurance like dang I'm really getting older but like I said it's a chit chat get ready with me I'm gonna be talking to you guys about the 22 things that I've learned since turning 22 and yeah we can go ahead and get started um, I'm gonna try my best to talk about the products that I'm using but like if I don't everything will be included in the description box below but first things first we're gonna go ahead and prime our face and I'm gonna use the NYX professional makeup first base primer spray next I'm gonna use this NYX um, professional makeup jumbo eye pencil to kind of like prime my eyes and honestly I don't even know what I'm gonna do for my eyeshadow to be really honest so this is all gonna be super duper random freestyle and I just hope it comes out right but um the first thing I've learned like is that I either want to be an actress or an endocrinologist and the one thing that's super like surprising to me about that is that like the two things that I really want to be like in this life are such like antitheses of each other like acting is like a super creative endeavor and stuff you don't need to go to school for acting and ooh. but like i was saying you don't need to go to school for af acting or anything and whatnot um with endocrinology you have to go through years of schooling it's super like science based and stuff like that and like when i first got into college um, I was just set on like being pre-med and just being in the medical field but mind you I've been a theater minor like the entire four years that I've been in college and for those who don't know I'm a um, fourth year at UGA so I've been like a theater minor like darn near all four years that I've been here so I've always had kind of that interest in like you know a creative endeavor like I really really enjoyed my theater classes like I've taken like an intro to acting class a script analysis class and I really do enjoy them like they really give me like a break from the heavier science classes like ochem and biology and whatnot and oh if I keep looking this way it's because I'm looking into my mirror but yeah it really gave me a break and so I don't know during like quarantine and lockdown and everything it really did give me a chance to really kind of like introspect and like really think about what I want to do and like what I see like in my future and stuff if I'm making sense and like what career path I really want to take on and I was like you know what bump it let me go ahead and at least try my best to like pursue acting like I like I said before I've been pre-med this entire time but like recently I'm just gonna pursue acting and I was like you know the worst that can happen is that you know I don't make it or I don't like achieve the goals that I'm trying to achieve as an actress and then I do go back to med school like med school I feel like will always be there it'll always be expensive but yeah that's number one um number two is that I'm really good at memorization like recently within the last couple of years I installed like the Anki app on my laptop and stuff like that and for those who don't know what Anki is I feel like it's more so popular along among med and like pre-med students and stuff and it's kind of like a flashcard system where like when you use your when you get the flashcard and you guess like what's underneath it and stuff you can tell Anki whether that was like easy for you like hard for you or good and it has like this system in which it'll bring back that um card to you like in one day or two days or three days depending on like the level of difficulty it was for you so I really liked Anki Anki really helped me with like my memorization a lot and like since I have been pursuing acting like I'll get scripts and sides and stuff that um, I'll need for like self tape auditions and like I like literally bewilder myself because I'm able to memorize like a lot of like script in like a short amount of time like once I memorize like a two minute monologue in like two days so I really surprised myself with that like if I really do sit down I focus my eyes are looking crazy wow but if I really sit down and like I focus and I concentrate like I'm really good at like memorizing stuff 
And it's funny that I say I'm really good at memorization because the next thing that I've learned is I'm actually quite forgetful. Like I literally have to make to-do lists and I have to set like reminders on my phone. And like I have a whole planner and I have a calendar full of like events and tests and stuff. Cause if I don't, I will forget. Like I can be so darn forgetful and I can't stand it. But you know, that's kind of like a part of growing up. You learn like kind of the bad qualities that you have and you do what you can to like fix them. But yeah, and it's funny cause I feel like I'm contradicting myself cause I just said I'm good at memorization yet I'm forgetful. Like, I don't know me, I really do have to come up with just ways in which to like combat that. Another thing that I've learned is that like I'm real life, I forgot what color I used. Oh, yeah, you see, and I forgot to tell y'all what makeup products I'm using. Um, I'm using the Summer and Saint Tropez palette by BH Cosmetics and this is the shade Bay. But um, the next thing I've learned is I'm really an ambivert. Like there are such things as ambiverts. Like you don't have to be like 100% an introvert and 100% like an extrovert. I truly am an ambivert. There are times where like, I can really be like super gregarious where like hanging with um, other people will really like fuel me and um, energize me and stuff like that. But then there are times where it's just like, I am super, super at peace when like I'm just by myself, like in my room reading book or I'm on social media and I really am just kind of fueled and energized by like my own presence like it really is a switch for me and like that switch can literally happen at any time the next thing I'm trying to see how deep I want to go with this blue we'll go deeper but the next thing that I have learned about myself is that I'm not maternal I really am not and it's funny because like I grew up always telling myself that, you know, I'm gonna have seven kids. Like when I was like a kid, I would always tell my mom and my grandma that when I grow up, I'm gonna have seven kids. But now it's like, I'm definitely only gonna have one or two. And I stay telling my mom that I'm only gonna have um, kids when I turn 30. She stays telling me, oh, you know, your biological clock will start ticking once you're 25 and you'll feel that urge and this, that, and the third. But like, I really do not see that happening um, anytime soon. One person who really taught me that I'm not really that maternal is um, my niece. Like my sister, she had a baby back in March and whatnot. And there was like a two week period, like where every single day I had to go like watch my niece. And I love her to death. Oh, that's my child. That's my baby. I love her so much. Oh, I miss her like so much, bro. Like if I could, I would literally go see her every day, but I wouldn't watch her every single day. Another thing that I've learned is that I really do kind of need to appreciate like my culture and my background more. I am Cameroonian and whatnot, but like for instance, like, I don't know our tribal language. Like, I don't know our tribal language. I don't really listen to um, any Cameroonian artists. Like, I don't know anything about like kind of Cameroonian art. Like, I always tell my mom that I'm afraid that like our culture is gonna die. Well, not die, but like for my culture within my family, I feel like it's gonna like kind of end with me, my brother, and my sister, because like, we just, we just don't know about like Cameroonian stuff like for instance I don't even know how to cook like a lot of our traditional dishes and stuff like that and I really do need to start making like conscious efforts to learn just so you know it doesn't like end with me and my brother and my sister and then also um ever since I like came to college um for those who don't know I do speak French um I'm not fluent but I'm definitely proficient like about 70 percent maybe fluent like I tell people if I was like lost in the middle of Paris I'd be able to like find my way back home and stuff like I know that much French ever since I've left home and I've been in college like I don't speak French as much as I used to back home because I'm like my grandma she um her English isn't well so she constantly spoke to me my brother my sister in French and like that's how it just learned my French and that's how it developed and grew but now that I'm in college all the time like there's really not as many opportunities for me to speak French. So like I'd be coming home and I'd be stuttering and for like forgetting basic words that like I knew back when I was younger and stuff like that. So like, I just really do need to kind of find my way back to like my culture and you know, my roots and stuff. The next thing that I learned is that um, I'm more of a creative like than I thought I was. Like one of my biggest struggles like growing up was definitely, I don't know, creativity just in general. And I feel like that grew from the fact that 
I really kind of hated art. And when I say art, I mean like literal like drawing and stuff like that. Well, like my art classes when we were forced to like paint and stuff like that back in elementary school, I really disliked it. And I think that stems from the fact that I just can't draw. So that's why I just didn't like it. Cause it's like, what's the point of something that, of doing something that like I'm not good at. And so I feel like from then, like I always grew up thinking that like I kind of wasn't creative and stuff like that and whatnot and I just didn't like like creative endeavors like as I grew older I realized it just takes me a minute to kind of like unlock my creativity the next thing that I've learned is that um and I feel like all my friends will attest to this and even my brother will attest to this because he continuously tells me this is that I'm really corny like and I just I really can't help it like and I don't want to be one of those people that are like, and I'm so goofy, oh my gosh. But like, no, I'm actually corny. Like I had to one day sit myself down. Like I, I think I told a joke once to like a group chat and like, first of all, nobody laughed at it, even though I thought it was hilarious. But I sat myself down that night and I was like, wow, Joelle, I mean, this was funny. Cause you know, of course you're a comedian but it was also pretty corny. Like, and I feel like I'm corny because I have a sense of humor in which like I find the simplest and the most basic of things humorous. Like I, I really can't help it. Like jokes that really aren't funny, I will die laughing over. But yeah, I'm like mad corny. I tell corny jokes. I'm just kind of corny in my personality, but I can't help it. And I used to like, um, when I was a teenager, I used to really like, I don't wanna say struggle with that, but I used to be like, ah uh, let me let me stop being me let me stop being like so corny and stuff nobody's gonna like me if i keep um being lame and corny but now that i'm 22 i'm like who cares like at this point i'm gonna just be me because like this will lead me to the next thing that i've learned it's because people will judge you no matter what that's why i just am a proponent and i just believe in a philosophy of literally doing whatever you want just doing whatever you want as long as you're not like hurting other people in the process because i just like people will judge you no matter what you're literally damned if you do and you're damned if you don't like do do what you want that leads me to the next thing that i learned is i know there was a time where a lot of people were saying like match your energy or like um you have got to match other people's energy but no one thing i've realized is like you continue to maintain your own energy and you will literally just attract and draw the people that you're meant to draw into your life like literally and um that's something that i had to learn in my personal life because i used to think back in the day that if people didn't match my energy um that they didn't like me or something or that we weren't cool don't try to match other people's energy because you're literally kind of changing yourself and changing who you are and accommodating to like what another person not necessarily wants you to be to what another person is just because you feel like that that's what you have to do i don't know if that made sense but like i feel like y'all know what i'm talking about like literally just maintain your energy and you will truly like draw and attract the people that you like are meant to draw and attract in your life and stuff like just be you bro like i don't know that's something i really had to just just drive into like my spirit just being you being uniquely you being authentically you and like i just feel like we really have this great tendency just just put on like a persona and change like kind of who we are based on like our environment or the people that we're surrounded by and that just really needs to stop like just be i'm gonna take my la girl pro conceal and the peach corrector to just help me correct some of my under dark under eye circles i'm gonna go back and clean this up too because i like i think it looks kind of nice but like it's a little messy the next thing that i've learned um about myself is and it's an okay thing like i'm no because i used to beat myself about this like when i was younger but now i'm realizing it's okay but um it's like i'm honestly i'm quite reticent and i'm quiet like when i first meet people it take it really does take me time oh, i just realized i got it oh never mind i'm blending out with this concealer brush no at first i thought i was gonna blend this out with a sponge and i was like dang now i gotta get up go all the way to sink what a sponge but I don't know why I'm delaying the inevitable because I got to go up and get a sponge anyway. 
but um yeah it's just that i'm i'm kind of quiet when i meet people like i feel like when some people they would describe me they would describe me as quiet but i i really am like just quiet and i'm to myself when it comes to like strangers and stuff like i don't know it takes me time to open up to people it really does it, it's okay to be in a show at times it really is like there's nothing wrong with that another thing that i learned um about myself is that like i love to travel i really do oh my gosh i love to travel like visiting different states different cities different countries i love it i love immersing myself like in different environments i really do i really feel like it also helps you to become a more like rounded person because it's just it's just good to surround yourself by like by people who have different experiences from you people who have different like thoughts depending on what them thoughts are though thoughts than you people who have like a different culture from you i feel like that's important and it really does help to make you like a more understanding and a more open-minded and just like a well-rounded person i feel like it's just really important to travel I definitely do want to make it a habit of like traveling like there's so many places so many countries that i want to see like i've never been to new york i've never been to cali and i want to go so bad especially new york because if you know me you know i love me some musicals and it is my dream my ultimate dream to see a show on broadway even i'll take even off broadway i don't mind seeing something on off broadway i just really want to see like a live like musical or something on broadway another thing that i learned is that ladies we do need to shoot our shots like i'm i'm because like i used to not shoot my shot at all because you know well i'm saying because you know like i know i just i don't know i just wasn't comfortable doing it or like oh i know because i was afraid of rejection because <laughs> i was afraid of rejection like that's natural that's human and stuff like that but um yeah like honestly this year i shot my shot like a couple times and like so far my success rate has been like high like ladies we we do need to shoot our shots it's funny because um my male friends they've been telling me this since like freshman year of college but i didn't start implementing it till senior year and no but i didn't start like implementing it really i don't know i feel like i forgot a makeup step i primed my face didn't i yes okay um the foundation i'm using by the way is the maybelline um superstay and the shade oh i think it's toffee 330 yeah toffee caramel and 330 but yeah honestly because i feel like our success rate will definitely be higher than like guys and my success rate has been pretty high like it it, it works shooting your shot really works oh this is looking very orange well we gonna continue something else that i learned is that um it's okay to not be okay in america we praise people who are like who are like good all the time who can get their ish done who seem to have it all together like we always constantly look up to those people but it's a it's okay to not be okay so it's okay to you know not to be unmotivated at times to like stay in bed till noon like that's okay especially if you know you're going through some stuff and i'm particularly talking about black women like it's okay for us to not to be okay like that really kind of stuck with me because one of my um Men mentors is she a mentor yeah like one of my mentors at church like for instance she kind of caught covid i said she kind of caught covid she caught covid and stuff like that and she didn't like in her mind she kind of thought of it as just like another cold and stuff like that and like she like got sicker and like sicker and her condition worsened and like people were even asking her they're like you don't look okay do you need to go to the hospital and stuff like that and she'd be like no it's just a cold it's just a cold and stuff i'll be fine like she was putting on the strong front and the strong like persona and she's a black woman mind you until like one day like she the paramedics literally had to come to her house and like pick her up off her kitchen floor and i'm using tart shape tape to conceal my under eyes and the doctors mentioned that had she even waited like an hour to call the um paramedics she would have died on her kitchen floor like I, it, it's okay to not be okay and I'm, this is specifically like for black especially like for black women because we really do have to just put on this front and this persona that like everything's good that yeah we're strong we can like save the world while still dealing with the discriminations and everything that we're going through and like we just we can tackle on everything but at the end of the day we're human like we're human we we get depressed we get upset 
we get sad we feel unmotivated we we feel lazy at times and that's okay like it's okay to not be okay or it's okay to not feel okay all the time and I've really had to tell myself that too, because especially being pre-med, it is a journey where you basically kind of have to seem like you're saving the world in order to have like a good med school application. Next, I'll be contouring with this Color Perfect Foundation Stick by Black Radiance in the shade Cashmere. Another thing that I learned is that it's really important. It's just very healthy to introspect, to really kind of like sit yourself down and think about like kind of who you are as a person your thoughts your feelings like your emotions your interactions with people evaluate your relationships with people whether they're healthy relationships and stuff like that it, like it's so important to introspect and ever since i just turned like 20 in general i've just had moments where i've literally just kind of like sat myself down and like really thought about just life and stuff in my future and who I am as a person. And then like one thing I re more so recently started doing this year is journaling. Oh my goodness, I cannot recommend journaling enough. Like every single time I journal, I feel like a huge emotional weight is like lifted off my shoulders. Like, oh my goodness. Like it's just like a release. Like I cannot recommend enough journaling because it really has helped me to just kind of step back and take a look at my life on like it's a, on like a grand scheme almost and really like evaluate my friendships and like my relationships and like how I feel about those relationships and those friendships and what I want to do for my future it's, it's just really nice to kind of see everything like on paper so yeah I, and plus you don't have to journal often I do long journaling sessions monthly and I will journal for about like two hours I have this app where you can journal you can do a daily uh, morning and night journal and it's a five minute journal and like that's how I first got into it but like I couldn't even commit to just 10 minutes a day so that's why I'm just like uh, let me just make it monthly because I can commit to doing like a long monthly journaling session for whatever reason because I will literally be sitting like in my room journaling for like two hours oh y'all did not blend in your foundation well mm -mm. and shoot I might go ahead and like do one tonight since November just ended but um the next thing I learned is that don't let the fact that like other people are doing it detour you from doing it too because like I know like for me personally, like with starting like a YouTube channel and everything, I told myself, ah, what will I talk about? There's so many like YouTubers here, blah, 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 this, that, and the third. And you, and you hear that it's hard to do certain things because like that um, avenue or that like category is like super saturated. Like there's so many different like makeup companies and stuff. But if that's your calling and that's your purpose for your life, go on with it. Like don't don't let the fact that like there are so many other people doing it detour you from doing it like shoot like my favorite analogy that i've seen is that when you go to like grocery stores and stuff you see 10 different brands of bread like and they're still up and running so it's just like don't let the fact that other people are doing it as well like detour you from doing it if you're if this is something you really want to do just do it another thing that i learned is to truly like trust your trust your gut trust your like intuition i feel like and for those who do believe like in God and in Christ and stuff like that, I feel like your gut instinct is a way of like the Holy Spirit trying to like warn your spirit of like people, of things, of situation. I truly like believe that from the bottom of my heart, like trust your gut instinct. I feel like it will never lead you wrong. And even if you haven't like necessarily like seen, I guess, the outcome of something, like for instance, if your gut instinct is telling you to, um, not trust a person or something or not befriend a person or to make sure you don't like interact with a certain person or you get you're getting like bad vibes from a person or something like that but that person seems so nice everybody likes them they they seem like so outgoing they seem like they never do they seem like a good friend and stuff and you have not had evidence from the text that that person's bad i feel like still trust your gut instinct because in those situations i feel like your gut instinct is trying to save you from entering like a potentially bad situation with that person yeah definitely trust your gut instinct it's for sure for sure they're like for a reason and you're not feeling that way like for no reason like i'm a firm believer in that the next thing that i learned is that like it's okay to have different like friend groups and friendships for different like 
reasons and purposes if that makes sense like you may be a part of two friend groups and one friend group is like a party friend group and the only time y'all really link and talk is if there's a move or if you're trying to go to a club or to a house party and stuff and that's okay and then you may have another friend group in which that's like kind of like your main friend group that's the one you like go to the movies with go out to eat with and stuff and that's okay it's okay to have different friend groups for like different purposes it's not like you like one more one friend more than the other i mean that could be the case too and that's okay like it's okay to have different friend groups with different dynamics and for different reasons something else that i've learned is that uh, i'm a little too nice or i am and i wrote that down this particular reason i put i'm too nice slash i'm a conflict avoider because they go one in the same i say this because there are many situations that i feel like that i've been in where people have said something that made me felt some type of way and instead of like addressing it or something i'll just be like okay i'm not going like talk to them anymore because it won't even be like people that i'm friends with it'll be like people that like i'm more associated as acquaintances like co-workers and stuff like that like they'll say something that'll rub me the wrong way and i'm just like okay you know the bible says to mark those who cause division and avoid them so you know that's how i kind of proceed yeah my contour's too harsh so i'm gonna lighten it up just a little bit with my coty airspun powder but yeah that's what i mean and like and i am like a conflict avoider <sighs> like i'll never forget i was taking um calm 1500 this i'm getting powder all over my black shirt but i was taking this interpersonal communication class and literally we had to take a test to know like how we deal with conflict and stuff and literally i'll never forget the day that i scored like as being a conflict avoider and i was like yep thank you for the confirmation lord like <laughs> I really am I don't do I don't like conflict I don't do well in conflict but like I don't know one thing I've had to learn is conflict is kind of like unavoidable you're gonna go through conflict in your life like it's it's bound to happen I just had to learn how to you know kind of stand up for myself and whatnot speak my mind and stuff like that I really am too nice like I'm a very much a keep the peace kind of person I really am and I saw a tweet one day that was like be mindful that like keeping that protecting your peace is more important than keeping the peace and i'm like girl you spitting another thing that i learned is that literally as much as folks be like why y'all gotta make it about race everything is not about race why you gotta bring race up into it everything really is about race really slavery was just so watered down slavery and like discrimination and everything it's it's so like watered down and like it really just bothers me that like folks still want to deny the fact that like race doesn't play a factor into things when it literally plays a factor into damn near everything like it, it really does like and it bothers me that folks continue to ignore that the fact that employers will look at the name tasha johnson and then they'll look at the name jessica johnson and they'll choose the jessica johnson just because her name sounds more white like that's a problem race really does kind of influence literally like everything that has happened in america i don't care what nobody says people be like it's not about race yes it is there's a reason why people were why a white person will enter an establishment and will choose to sit next to like another white stranger versus sitting next to another black stranger but yeah i'm just using um this blush from my Nouveau Naturals 26 color shadow and brush palette from BH Cosmetics. Using the, ooh, what is this? The Revolution Glow Splendor Ultra Matte Bronzer in the shade Medium. But like, even like just the concept of professionalism and you know, you're being told ever since like you're young or you're looking for jobs and stuff, you gotta be professional. This is how you look professional. But just the very concept of professionalism is like for real, for real rooted in in being white or acting more white like like just the concept of professionalism is basically like racist like if your hair is in a wash and go and it's type four that your hair looks unprofessional like literally it's just like bro what in the world like i don't know it's just it just really just blew my mind like the fact that everything like when i say everything i mean so many things so many things that you wouldn't even like imagine Ooh, <laughs> let's go ahead and blend it up but so many things you wouldn't even imagine like have to um be rooted in or be dealing with like race it does like race just really does just kind of influence a lot of the things that we know today 
and it really does influence a lot of the decisions that people make it really does i'm gonna go ahead and put these lashes on off camera because your girl still be struggling to put on lashes sometimes but these are lashes that i just got from beauty supply store i don't even know what i want to do for my lips hmm i want to try out the super bright pink nyx lingerie um what is this i think it was a liquid lipstick yeah let's try that on but of course we're gonna tone it down with some brown lip liner um two hours later i'd be scared to wear this lipstick well this liquid lipstick because it's so bright i might tone it down with my nyx um my butter gloss and madeleine that out madeleine madeleine and madeleine that i always use yeah we're gonna do that we're gonna put madeleine over it mm. it's just very bright ah, much better wait did that even make a difference i don't know I feel like it made a little bit of a difference. Let me go ahead and segue into the last thing that I learned, which is that I might have hyperhidrosis. Super random, but yeah, I think I have hyperhidrosis. Growing up, I was always just like a kind of a naturally sweaty person. And, so, and I just thought that was normal. I thought everyone was just really sweaty. Until I learned that antiperspirant is literally supposed to not make you sweat like when people put on antiperspirant they like won't sweat and then i don't know it got me to thinking why do i still sweat and so recently i've been like kind of playing around and testing out like extra strength deodorants and stuff like that and ever since i've started using like extra strength deodorants i still sweat but i definitely do sweat a whole lot less bruh like I don't sweat as much as I did back in like middle school and high school and stuff like that but um I don't know I do I might have to go see a doctor or something one day to um actually like confirm it but I think I do have hyperhidrosis but yeah I'm just a really sweaty person I heard you can get Botox in your armpits to like help with that and I definitely foresee that in my future at some point Definitely put in the comments below. Let me know what you think of this eye look. I feel like it's giving raccoon and my eyelashes lifted. <sighs> now that we're back in business with the lash, I'm gonna go ahead and set my face with my Urban Decay All Nighter Spray. And that's all I have for today's video. Thank you so, so, so much for watching. And just, I guess, journeying me the uh, I said journey joining me on this like just journey of me rambling about just the things that I've learned I'm 22 now oh my goodness like ah because like turning 21 is like yeah I can legally drink and all but like 22 now I just feel like I'm getting older like the milestones them age milestones that you're supposed to hit in life I feel like I'm almost at the point where like I'm done hitting them before I know I'll be 25 and I'll be able to rent a car but um, once again, thank you for joining me in this video and just hearing me talk. If you made it to the end, I appreciate you because I feel like I rambled a lot and maybe I was talking about a whole lot of nothing. But like, if you made it to the end, I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you like this makeup look. And once again, everything that I put on my face, I'll go ahead and include in the description box down below. Definitely don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It really does help support my channel and I'll see you all next time.